I need to know everything. Who in the what and the where I need everything. Trust me, I hear what you're saying, but act like it's new what you're telling me. I'm curious, George. I hop in the Porsche, a five and a horse. I'm ready for war. I'm coming for throws to turn to a ghost. I need to know everything. Now you'd be surprised at the info you get is by letting them talk, so I'm letting them talk. Gotta keep quiet, maneuver in science, then let them and talk up their body. Another one body, this is how I go. I got some secrets, I'm shaking the game so they stay on their toes. Stay in your lane, I to stay on the go. I can play with the pros and act like a rookie, so they overlook me. Then I double up again, none of their nose, none of them cold. They just got lucky but never adapted, so I'm to the All right, all right, let's go. Getting ready, we getting ready. I we got think a great that they show. got me, but what do you know? Show. I had a beat and we had smoke. I'm ready for smoke. I need to know everything. Who in the what in the All right, you guys, welcome to the golf locker room. Welcome to the golf locker room. All right. What up, Big Sif? What's good with you, bro? Hope all is well in LA and Tampa. Everything's good. Miss Clark's golf life. What up, though? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I'm gonna give you a clap. I'm gonna let you get yourself together. Miss Clark's golf live. Uh, you'll be all right. Out and come back in, sister the girl. No sound. All right, Sif. Um, we got a great show today. Miss Clark will be on in a second. Um. Any news, anything got going? Yeah, well, you know, I always um, try to keep my eyes peeled as it relates to social issues. And so I don't I don't think we touched on uh, the issue uh, that um, caught America by storm the past couple of weeks, and that was uh, Kyrie Irving. And, um, you know, the thing is, is, you know, I stand with Kyrie. Uh, but, you know, the thing is, at the end of the day, uh, it's about strategy. And I don't know if mm. if the people have watched the, uh, I've read the book, but watched the movie. It's an old 1960, 70 movie, The Spook Who Sat By The Door. And, uh, the, you know, he infiltrated the FBI, got all the information, and he took it back to the community so that he could build. And, you know, our professional athletes, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, they, they, they fight the right fight, and sometimes they don't use strategy. Um, you know, as long as you're getting that money and you're taking it back, building this infrastructure over here, uh, then it's win-win. Uh, kind of like what Akon is doing over in Africa. So, you know, I think a lot of times, man, we need to, um, as professionals, the professional athletes, use some strategy. Um, let's create some, uh, some, some food places in these food deserts. Let's create some infrastructure. Uh, let's create some jobs. Let's create some raw goods, manufacture, production, and distribution. Uh, no matter what they call you, you know, that's, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It was it was tough. Dave Chappelle's monologue kind of summed it up pretty oh, good. It was dope. You know, it was dope. every everything you know ain't for everybody, right? Um, especially if you're digging and trying to find self, trying to find history, trying to find your own self-identity you don't want to take that journey in the public until you're sure of everything you know even about yourself so Kyrie's Kyrie was totally totally to me my personal opinion was over the top when you cry when you cry wolf like that then how do we really stop anti-semitism uh, if everything you just don't like you call anti-semitism you know what right. i mean anti-semitism is real but you can't be crying wolf for everything that you don't totally understand kanye right. to me is a different issue um he needs grace and love during his time you know what i mean i don't excuse bad behavior but can we have some humility can we have some grace can we have some forgiveness and can we get him the necessary help he needs but yeah it's been a it's been a crazy two weeks i always say this you know just my personal opinion we gain nothing by fighting the jews there's no there's no prize there's no reward um we've dealt with them in business for years because actually 
the power structure was like we don't want to deal with the with 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 the negroes you guys can deal business with them so we did business with them especially entertainment music and stuff because the power structure gave them the scraps and we were lower than the scraps and they do business with us and that's why we have a a, a, a relationship and we we fight in cousins that's how i like to call it because we do business and we deal with each other a lot but um cool. you know it's gonna work itself out it always does and oh, it yeah. will be better for it in the end um, like I said, David's monologue, brilliant. His layers of complexity and funniness and truth is, you know, it's a rare, rare thing. Um, golf stuff, golf stuff. We got some good Tony guests. Phenom, man. Come on, man. He's he's on a tear. He's on a tear for sure. Tony Phenom. He's killing, Phenom he's killing on it, a tear. Man. What's that? Uh, win number three this year, right? Because this was... Uh, I know the RSM right now. This is the last of the of the tournaments for this year because they're not doing a wraparound season. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think that's number three for the year. They had a great killing. breakthrough. They had a breakthrough, that's man. They had a breakthrough. One of our favorite guys, and um, you know, time, 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 time. Everybody's like, "Oh, is he gonna win? Is he gonna win?" Everyone that gets on tour that puts in the work, I always say, some minorities we are. Since we were late getting to the party of golf our blossom and our peak is a little bit later than others so don't right. count people out i already told y'all in three years cameron champ gonna win a major i put that out there in the universe i already know he's gonna peak not when people think he's gonna peak he's gonna peak when he's ready to peak because we're always catching up you know what mm -hmm. i mean his golf time yeah. schedule is a little different than others that's been in it since they were four. So, watch. Three years, major. Uh, Miss Clark's Golf Life. What's cracking? None much here. Oh, testing, testing. Yeah, you still got the bird, but we don't care. We just don't have just to do it. The bird. <laughs> exactly. I don't know. Exactly. No, everything's good. Okay, any golf news? Got nothing. Got my new stealth driver. That's all I got. I'm excited. You know, that's about like it. Stealth. stealth is nice. We are. I guess we all like stealth. Um, yeah. I didn't. I was. I wasn't. I wasn't sold in the beginning. Even though I know carbon fiber is a good material, and I, I believed mm -hmm. in the carbon fiber, I still wasn't. First of all, I didn't want to pay six hundred. That's number one. That, let's keep mm -hmm. it. I'm gonna keep it a hundred for something new. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I had just found a driver I actually liked, and I was using the Sim for years. The Sim 1. I didn't even move to the Sim 2. And what made you get it? Uh, We in L.A., baby. The ports <laughs> the ports come, and stuff falls off the uh, off the boats here, here and there. So you get good deals. So a, a deal ran across, my, ran across my table that I couldn't let sit on the table so i picked it up for for a song and a dance just to try it out if i didn't like it i would just put my sim back on my shaft but i like it um to me it's it's a little more forgiving and the disparity uh, of your bad and good shots it tightens it up a little bit for me mm. okay i'm a little tighter in the fairway even on my miss hits so to me it's a good forgiving club I'm still working with it, but uh, so far I like it. And it gives you, for me, about three or four extra yards, which means nothing because I'm an amateur. And if I get over 250 on the courses I play, I'm fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm fine. Just get me 250, 260, and I'm fine. Um, anything else? Anything else? All right, let's get to our guests because uh, we got some special people on. Um, they are in the middle of their grind you know what i mean and i'm just glad we have them on because people have questions people have um don't know too much about their journeys and it's always good always good to share people's journeys and hear from the horse's mouth so to say that's what i think so let's bring on our Miss Trish, give us a good intro. You're the intro queen. You're always good at that. I'm going to try. I'm going to try my best. Yeah, you got that bird, bud. You're all right. <laughs> all right. So we have Montrell Wells. 
um, professional right. golfer. We also have Michael Bradham, and we also have Marcus Bird. They're all they all play on the PGA Tour, uh, the APGA Tour, driving to work and be, get on the PGA Tour. Um, and so it's a journey. All of them have their own journeys, their own stories. So we definitely want to have them on so we can hear about it. And um, let's hear them. Let's hear, let's hear them out. All right, we'll bring them on. y'all we just get them together and um welcome 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 you guys welcome to the golf locker room thank you guys for coming on to share your journeys to share your stories we just are so super super excited to uh to have you on so um welcome mr michael how's it going how's it going mr montrell Welcome, how y'all doing, golfers. man? Hey, appreciate hey, man, we're it, doing appreciate right. it. We just, we just happy to have you guys on. Um, we're very excited. Either one of you, whatever one, just give us a brief intro. Tell us about, you know, your your, your beginning journeys, if you may. Uh, well, uh, I'll go ahead and go. Um, yeah. Um, so I guess really for me, um. My journey really started my freshman year of high school. Uh, I was playing basketball, football, baseball, typical stuff. And uh, I was just looking for something else to do and ended up making a golf team and got bit by the bug. So played throughout high school, sat out a year, uh, actually walked onto a basketball team in San Antonio, got hurt, got a scholarship to Prairie View, played three years at Prairie View, then turned pro in 2013. Um, gave up the game in 2016 and started playing again in 2020. Uh, then I met my man Montreal, taught me in the turning pro again, and uh, here we are a year later. Now, don't be humble, don't be humble. You did something just, just recently ago <laughs> after restart. Now, let's talk about that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, this year started off with the conditional status on APGA, um, had to meet certain requirements, and uh, met uh, Ms. Clark down in Port St. Lucie, and yes. uh, I had to, had to have a good showing down there and ended up finishing second. Um, Tim dropped a birdie on me on 18. <laughs> Still salty about that one. But, um, <laughs> uh, had, had an up and down year and went into Tustin this uh, past week and came out with a dub. Come on now. Love it. Come on now. That's we love it, man. We love it. We love it. That journey is great. Wins are hard to get on them golf courses. Always hard to get. Uh, Mr. Montreal, tell us a little bit about yourself. I wish I was sipping. I know you and Sif is over hey. there sipping, man. That's how y'all do. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, it, it's uh God is good, life is good. Um, Montreal Wells is my name. Um, originally from Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, I live in Jacksonville, Florida now. I've been a professional for ten years. Uh, two of those years I did play. Uh, I had a car accident and some surgery. Um, so uh, I've been a professional ten years, but I've only actively played for eight. Um, my journey actually started with golf, um, in college. I was introduced to the game as a 12 year old in the projects, uh, by a, a organization called Fairway Outreach. Um, but I didn't really uh, like the game. I was so good at everything else. Like I played everything growing up, basketball, football, baseball. Uh, I ran track. I was just really, really fast. Um, so that attribute allowed me to do, you know, every sport and be pretty, pretty good in everything. Um, okay. it was until, you know, I got to college, uh, and I went to college, I went to Benedict college, BCBC, BC, baby. 
um, on a full track scholarship. I went on a full track scholarship um, and yeah, um, I went on a full track scholarship and they end up not being able to honor my scholarship because they uh, they fired the coach that recruited me. Mm. Um, so so prior, prior to me getting there in 2000, um, they had fired the coach and I had no uh, no scholarship there for me, so I had no way to pay for college. Um, so long story short, there was a golf team tryout, scholarships available, sign on campus, went and talked to the coach, went and tried out, embarrassed myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> talked to the coach afterwards, you know, the athletic director asked him because of what happened with my track scholarship to give me an opportunity. Uh, the golf coach hated me for that, uh, but he did allow me to practice at the facility where the team practiced. And he told me I could come back and try out the very next year. Um, so I worked, I worked my behind off for that year, uh, not knowing how I was going to pay for school. Um, uh, but I had good grades, so it kind of kept me afloat. But the very next year, uh, I made the golf team. Oh, wow. Um, the year after that, uh, we won the National Minority Championship. I earned a scholarship to play golf. And, uh, yeah, uh, okay. I fell in love with the game. I did. I fell in love with That's the game the right there. And uh, I decided that, you know, golf was what I wanted to do uh, with my life. So I just continued to play amateur golf and um, I didn't begin to get good enough to turn professional until uh, 2010 um, but I had a full-time job for Delta Airlines at the time so um, I couldn't I couldn't just go out and play um, but two years later I decided to go ahead and, and, and turn professional and I played in my first uh, professional event and it was an APGA tour event down in uh in Tampa at Rogers Park, and uh, I, fi right. I finished I finished in tenth place for my very first professional um, right. golf tournament, and it was it was cool because I was a full time I was a manager for Delta Airlines at the at the airport in Jacksonville, so I was a full time you know employee like I I was a part <laughs> I was a part time professional golfer, but I you know I would work my behind off every chance I got, and you know me getting this first chance to start in this tournament. Um, he finished in tenth. Was like, okay, yeah, I can do this, and so I've been just chasing it ever since. Um, and my, I've, I've had, had a couple, a couple top of five. I've had a couple top five finishes. Um, I just recently finished uh, top ten. I finished top of eighth at the event that Mike, Big Mike won uh, in Tustin. Nice. And uh, I've played PGA Tour Latin America um, in my in my history. I played that tour in 2015. Um, so uh, I, I have an interesting interesting journey. Um, I currently, uh, I currently am still chasing the dream. I do have three jobs uh, on top of being a father and a, a husband. I do have That's two right. children. So uh, I'm, a, I'm a testimony that uh, your dreams only die if you let them. So I'm still chasing them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Both of those are hell of a story. It's hell of a story because some people don't know the complexities of chasing a dream, whether it's sports, entertainment, business, or whatnot. And it never dies unless you let it die. Both of you is like, well, I had to stop for a minute. I came back. And like my main man here, he he stopped for a few years, came back, and, and he's a winner. And yeah. um, it, everything is not either you play amateur or you're Tiger Woods. There's a lot right. of textual stuff in the middle that will bring a lot of joy and a little money to your lives in between amateur and tiger woods and keeping the journey going on big sif i know you're listening closely give us something give our boy something yeah my trail sound like he opened an article with all that ice on on over <laughs> <laughs> Real drinkers don't use ice. <laughs> hey, oh, hey, man. Want that yeah. corn. See, yeah. Hey, you thought, see, that's you, you anticipate I'm drinking. This ain't no but some Kool Aid, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you grew up like I did. You drank Kool Aid hot. <laughs> no, <laughs> sir. We yeah, had ice, man. We, we had ice, baby. But you're a young we man. Right. You're a young yeah. so uh, yeah. Yeah. over there drinking syrup. Yeah, For real. Drink. But now, nah, this, uh, this, Mike. This, 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 this herb. You um, <laughs> you say you, you, you the golf bug bit you later on in your career. Uh, you didn't start you didn't start young being matriculated to the game of golf. 
as a young seed like some of these kids are today? So mm -hmm. my question to both of you guys, and Mike, you could go first. If you would have been introduced um, to the game of golf, like a first tee program, some of these startup programs in the communities, uh, where do you think that would have put you guys at right now? Would have that expedited your careers a lot further or faster or, or what? Um, I, I think so. Uh, I actually had this conversation with uh, a high school or yeah, a high school kid the other day. Um, I was telling him that I think if I would have started younger, a lot of the growing pains that I went through in high school and college would have happened prior to high school, which would have put me on a track, I, th I think, in theory, uh, would have put me on a track throughout high school where I was playing in better competitions or playing against better competitors in general throughout high school and college. Uh, with me not going through that process, it was a big curveball that I had to learn going from high school and in college and then turning pro that I, I still had to test the ropes and see what was going to happen. So I think starting earlier definitely gets you through that process a lot sooner in your career. And in, in the long run, it just it, I think it'll help propel you further uh, once you're ready to get going playing professionally. Love okay. it, love it, love it. Miss Trish. So question for the both of you. We know this game is a mental game. Both of you have I ain't families. get the answer, though. He, I ain't get to answer that last question. Oh, run it, run it, run it back. Go, Montreal. Run it back. <laughs> run it back. Run it back. I, I, I mean, unless you don't want my answer, because I know. Oh, no, we want your answer. answer. We want well, your answer. You okay, okay. We want it. Um, we want it. <laughs> so, so, so for me, um, it's kind of a, it's kind of a yes and no, um, simply because, like I said, at, I was introduced at the age of twelve. Um, but back then, you know, growing up in the in the project where I did. Golf wasn't cool. You know, that was pre-Tiger Woods. There was no mm. Tiger Woods. There was no black face that you saw that made golf cool. So for us, you know, we just we just played it because they took us to McDonald's. You know, it, it was a lot of perks right. that came along with that. We got to ride on the van together and talk trash to each other on the way to the driving range. So um, had I had I been that age starting now in this new era where golf is cool, absolutely. Um on a whole nother level, just, you know, the, the resources, the, you know, the amount of time that you have to be prepared for golf on the level that we play on now. Um, absolutely. I, I feel like, it, you know, making, making it on the professional level would have been a whole lot easier um, with just being able to start the game earlier. But that's in this era, because in my era growing up, you know, golf, you was picked at, you know, I mean, you don't play golf, you know, that's a white man sport or, you know, blase, blase, you know, we don't play, we, we play football, we play, we play mm -hmm. basketball, and baseball, you know, those are the sports we play because you, you look, you was looked at as soft when you played golf. So yeah. Um, yes. And no to, to that question. Mm -hmm. Facts. Facts. That's wow. so, so true. Miss Clark. Okay. So back to the question before I really interrupted. So, <laughs> 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 so my question is obviously we know this game is mental right and so again different journeys different paths you have families you went to benedict you had the hiccup so this is a question for the both of you um but what was the motivation that kept you going what was the motivation that kept you pushing uh mm -hmm. i'll go first this time mike so for me um i i i everything i had put in my life as far as goals and where I wanted to be involved, me going to college. So um, being able to have my track scholarship stripped from me, um, my motivation was to find a way to pay for college so that I did not miss the window of, you know, being a college graduate and being able to start my life and do the things in my life that I plan to do. So my motivation was one, to earn scholarship. And then two, the coach like hated me and, and he did everything he could to show me that I didn't belong there. And so basically, in a sense, he was telling me that I couldn't do it. And some of the players on the team was the same thing. So when you tell me I can't do something, then, you know, that's just that's definitely, you know, poking the bear. That's 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 making yeah. me come come out, uh, come out even stronger than I normally ever would. So that was my motivation. And then once I fell in love with the game, I just want to take it as far as I can, which is why my social media name is Future World Number One, because I feel that's like right. with the opportunity 
I can definitely make it happen. Love that's it. right. That's love right. It. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Let's get that up too. Uh, for me, um, from a young age, I just always wanted to play a professional sport. Uh, my dad was a all-around athlete, similar to Montreal. Um, basketball, football, baseball, track, swimming. Like you, any sport you name, he was probably doing it. Uh, growing up in Florida. And he was actually drafted uh, by the Phillies and mm. went to Florida State to play football, but got he left because he was partying too much. Um, but my dad is my biggest role model, and I've always looked at his accolades, especially athletics, uh, as something that I wanted to live up to and surpass. So for me, uh, just hearing that my dad was drafted was – uh, like a, I don't want to say a kick in the butt, but it was a kick in the butt. It's like, if you want to play professional sports, you better get up and get on it. So um, my motivation was always, I guess, really just to make my dad proud and also uh, play professional sports in whatever it was, whether it was football, basketball, or baseball, and later golf. Um, so it was, it was always just to be able to play professional sports for me. Nice, nice. Um, you guys travel a lot. Uh, the APGA uh, purses have gotten bigger. More eyes are looking. Specials I've seen on on the Golf Channel and NBC. How is the travel? How's the grind? I did entertainment for over twenty something years, and I traveled the world and was on tours. And how is and I miss it not being in it anymore. I just love that I know how to pack a bag and go in five hours and we can hit two, <laughs> two countries. Oh I'm God. ready. You know, I'm, how do you and I miss it now that I'm older and I'm just doing a regular job and I'm a civilian. I always call I'm a civilian now. I miss being able to just grab a bag and be like, I'll see you in Europe. You know, you guys travel a lot. You grind a lot and you're doing it golfing as an amateur golfer. I wish I was traveling doing <clears throat> golfing to try to make some bread as a professional. How do you guys like to travel? Tell the young kids about how you got to pack and 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 how hard it is and making making flights and stuff. Or do you enjoy that part? Or are you like that's the least part of the professional game you like? Just expound on that any way you want to. Uh for me, I love traveling. Yeah. Um both of my parents retired Air Force, so I moved a little bit growing up. Uh, living in Europe. Um, every summer we went to my grandmother's house in Louisiana. So I like seeing new places. The traveling part for me is fun. Um, <laughs> this year we went to uh, Louisville and St. Louis. I drove to both of them from San Antonio. Mm. My wow. called me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> insane. <laughs> insane. <laughs> but I had, I had never seen Tennessee. I had never seen Kentucky. I never been through Oklahoma. Uh, so the drive for me and traveling for me is the easy part. Uh, booking plane tickets and hotels, not so much. <laughs> that, yeah. that part's a headache. Uh, just trying to get everything to, to marry up, to get yourself where you're going early enough to where you can get acclimated to the, whether you're on the East Coast, West Coast, whatever the case may be. Um, as well as making sure that you're staying somewhere long enough in case you win. Uh, yeah, I, I almost messed that one up in California. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, so travel's easy. Uh, booking all the other stuff is a little bit more on the difficult side for me. Bye, trail. Okay. Uh, man, for me, it's a part of the job. Um, mm. I mean, you, it's, it's impossible to play professional golf if you don't travel. Um, it'd be great if you could, you know, play every professional tournament, right? You know, 20, 30 miles from your home where you can sleep <laughs> in your bed every night. But unfortunately, that's not possible uh, for me. I was always pretty much a homebody. I never I mean, I stayed at home until I was 28. You know, I went to college at home. Um, so I didn't I didn't even go out of state for college. So I didn't move away from home until the age of 28. Uh, which is when I moved to Florida. And so for me, the travel was new, um, but I knew it was a part of what I wanted to do. So I embraced it. Uh, does it get hard from time to time? Yeah, um, I've had 
some 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 serious uh trips where I've had to sleep in the airport, which is absolutely no fun. Matter of fact, I slept in the a airport nightmare. on the way on the way to California. This last time I slept in the airport because my flight was the uh it had uh, been diverted from uh, mm. I was supposed to go to Austin and it got diverted to Houston because of weather. And we sat there on the plane for three and a half hours before we could go. And when we got there, all the connections were gone. And the airline said, you know, hey, we, we don't have to honor anything because it's weather. We can't control weather. So yeah. the next flight was six and a half hours later. It was 1.30 in the morning. They was like, our first flight out is 8 a.m. You want it? You can have it. If not, you know, we'll put you on something else. So, um, But, yeah, I've been I've been to South America. Uh, I traveled quite a bit when I was playing a PGA Tour Latin America. Um, it's beautiful to travel to see different places. It gives you a different perspective. Um, and it definitely, for me, it's changed my life. Um, I, I, the things I may have, may have used to take for granted or, or weren't that important to me in the past, after going to South America, you know, I really appreciate all of that stuff now. Um, it gets harder as you have children and, and get married. Um, so that's the hardest part now, just being away from your wife and your kids. Um, that's the hardest part for me. Um, but once you realize, like, you know, once you make it on the PGA Tour, your family can come with you and you won't have to be away from them. Road so trip. it's just it's just a grind. Yeah, it's just a grind. It's just a grind. Yeah. So I, I enjoy it, though. Okay. Nice, 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 nice. Let's get that out. So, yeah. So question for both of you. We talked about, so you talked about the family. You talked about the wives. How important is it to have that support or that supportive wife that – hopefully understands your grind. Does it, does it, obviously it helps out, I'm sure, but how does that work out with having the wife, the family, the kids, and being able to follow your dreams? I'm blessed with a superwoman. Uh, I mean, I can't say it any other way. If I didn't have the wife I had, I probably would have packed it in a, a long time ago. Uh, my mm -hmm. golf career is solely based off of uh, that I have a superhero for a wife who will jump in and take care of everything at home. And the only thing I got to worry about is making sure I, I compete at the, to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. uh, when I don't play well, I don't get the bickering in the morning about, all right, how long are we going to do this? I get, it's <laughs> okay, baby. You know, come back home. You're working hard. Just keep grinding. It's going to happen. Yeah, that's um, so, so for me, I, I'm very appreciative of my wife, and I make sure I let her know that on the regular. But without that – it's pretty much impossible unless I mean if you're going to stay together and to yeah. play good golf you have to have that or it's or it's impossible mm. yeah that's a blessing that's beautiful oh, hey. hey little girl hey it. little one it's bedtime for us <laughs> like it's time for bed I, that, that, that's a great great statement because I was going to ask you guys have been grinding you're looking for your dreams if your family's a wife is like okay pack it in are we gonna do one more year? Would you be happy with that? If if it was time to stop, or or would you would you, could you throughout the years of playing golf, like me, I say this when I did entertainment, I had to pack it in in two thousand. It was my last album I put out through uh, Universal. I was they were switching from CDs to digital, and the the industry was a hot mess, and everybody was either you was about to go back to school or you was going to be a used car salesman because the music industry was in turmoil <laughs> in 2000. Your choice, what you was going to do. You could try to hold out and spend the last little bit of the money you earned previously, or you could make a new life. But I always tell people I didn't do more than I, most, but I did more than most. You know, I was actually in the industry and made money from the industry. Both of you guys are in the golf. You are professional golfers and you've made money doing professional golf. You've made money playing golf. The three below you, me, Sif, and uh, Trish, we pay money to play golf. You guys have made money playing golf and following your dreams. Dream. No, no, skins don't count. Skins don't, skins don't count. Skins don't count. I see Trish over there talking about, well, maybe. No, not maybe. Skins don't count. Skins don't count. Check. That's how she keeps you in the club. But, listen, um, listen. Have you, uh, are you guys comfortable packing it in anytime it, it has to happen or you just i know you guys still feel like there's a gang of shit to do 
Uh, there's a game of more stuff you can do. But as your journey continues, are you still comfortable right now? Uh, are the fire me? still in there? Like it ain't. I ain't done. Uh, so because this is my first year, so I'm a, I'm gonna tie your question into the previous question. Uh, so when I had stopped playing, I started playing so pl- slow pitch softball in Florida. Um, when we moved to Jacksonville, they didn't have a team that I could find. And I was miserable in the house. I hate being inside for any stretch. And my wife actually kicked me out the house and told me to go to the golf course. <laughs> so um, when I started playing again, I played on the Golf Week Amateur Tour and stuff like that. And I was winning golf tournaments. I finished third in Jacksonville City Amateur. And when I told her I was going to Thing about turning pro again, she fully supportive of it. Um, so to answer your question uh, that you just had, uh, if I have to step away from it, if my family needs it, yes, I will. I wouldn't be happy about it initially, but I would get to that point because with the way that my parents raised me, it was first and foremost, and actually my child and I talked about this yesterday, first and foremost is your family. You got to mm-hmm. take care of your wife and kids. So, as of right now, I'm playing. Yeah, you could say, hell no, nah, I'm, I'm in it. I'm grinding. <laughs> as, of, yeah, <laughs> as of right now, I'm playing. Um, but if if it came down to it and I had to do it to, to be with my family more, then absolutely, I, I have to step away from it. And I only say that just because I know you guys got a hell of a lot more to do and your fire is still very hot inside for the competition. But I'm just in great awe that you guys are already professionals and been grinding for years and made money doing playing golf professionally, which is crazy for us amateurs because we talk all kind of stuff and what we going to do. And we should do this. But you guys get to travel and play and make money and make a living from playing golf. So th- that alone to mm. us is like, or at least for me, I- I'm just in awe of it because I know how hard it is to grind it out making a living for something people pay to do montreal what what say you you ready um yeah man um (laughs) i mean my my wife knows exactly how i feel about this game um i'm not sure whether i'm a better or worse husband with golf uh (laughs) i mean i i would i would vote to say that I'm, i'm a better person with golf a better husband better father with golf um, but being without it for a couple of years, you know, I could just remember how empty I felt, how miserable I mm. felt. Um, because I mean, it's, it's not something that I just do. It's not something that I just want to do. It's my passion. It's my drive. So, I mean, it found me golf chose me. Hmm. So because right. it chose me, because it chose me, I don't think that I'm going to be able to walk away until it walks away from me. Um, and because of the woman that I have, like I said, I got a superhero. I don't even know if she would be able to say, you know, babe, I think it's time to pack it in. Um, because she knows how much I love it and I know how much she loved me. So to see me light up just doing it, you know, Mm. I think, I think it would have to be an extreme situation for her to say, you know, babe, I think we need to pack it in and and do something different. Nice. So, uh, yeah. Family. Family. Family is everything. Support is everything. And everything you do, people, support and anything you do makes it that much easier no matter what. Big Sif, give us a something. My drill. You've been quiet. You, uh, you say the right things, man. You know your wife's going to watch this, so you say all the right <laughs> Hey, man. Hey. hey. Happy wife, happy life, man. I'm, I'm, the, I'm, the, young, I'm the youngest in, in my family, bro. I'm the youngest in my family. And I, I was brought up by old heads, so they, they That's just right. schooled me on nah, all doing, that, you, man. You, I'm, I'm an old head. You're doing right, brother. You're okay. Right. That's it. That's, That's right. it. Right there, baby. That's it. Right. Right. Hey, so, right. so, you know, we talk about junior golf all the time in a lot of our podcasts, and uh, we always talk about the recipe. And some of these golf forums and platforms, you see a thousand different recipes. But Mike and Montreal, what, in your opinion, is the recipe uh, if you were 10 years old um, and you were, you know, taking it back 
uh, getting into the game, what would be the recipe? What do you think, knowing what you know now, what do you think the recipe would be in order to get these kids from uh, these junior level matriculating into college and, and maybe next step? Uh, for one, man, uh, I think it's more important than anything to make golf fun. Um, when when you make it enjoyable, um, they actually see the true life in the game. You know, when, when it's fun, they don't mind doing it. You know, they, they want to do it. You know, you have to tell them it's time to come in the house and stop practicing versus forcing them to go out there and do it. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think I think it's just really that important to just make it fun. Show it because because at the end of the day, it's a game. And, and the more the more that you show them it's a game and it's a game that you can actually earn a really good living with, whether you play it professionally, whether you're just good at it and you work for a company. And because of that, you get good connections. You make make big sales. You know, the, the company sends you out to meet other people. Um, the fact that you keep it fun is is the recipe for me. And when I teach, because I've been teaching for quite some time, um, when you make it fun, I feel, I feel like they get so much more out of it. They enjoy it so much more. You keep their attention. And um, at the end of the day, once you start with fun, everything else kind of falls into place for me. Love it. Love it. Hey, bro, you took care of everything I'm going to say. <laughs> hey, I mean, fun, fun, fun is the first one, like you said, first and foremost. But I, yeah, once once you're able to show the kids where where their life can go from a corporate side of it, or even playing professionally, like I mean, everyone looks at the LeBron James on all these guys that like, oh, they've got this, they got that. Well, let's talk about Tiger Woods being a billionaire athlete, like. You can make money playing golf. Even if you don't play professional, you can make money playing golf. Like And that right, Trish. Hey, listen. I was, was going to leave her out of that one. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like, there's, I think, beyond having fun and also where it can take you uh, career-wise, it's also something that if you have older individuals in your family that love to play the game, you can play with them for a long time. Uh, yes. My dad's always told me that one of the things that he has thoroughly loved that I picked up the game was that him and I can go and play. And that can mm-hmm. be our four to five hours of just spending time with each other. So oh. those, those three aspects for me are, are definitely the, the ones that I would I do preach to the kids that I do help out during junior camps and stuff like that. So, Well, I think, um, and you know, the thing is, I think, I think what happens being introduced to the game is a great thing. And, 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 and both of you guys said fun. Uh, and that's what it should be. But I think then all of a sudden you have some of these parents who think their kid is better than what he or she is. And they start these regiments. And, you know, if you probably would pull the kid to the side and talk to him, he'd probably say, hell, I don't, I don't want to play this anymore. But I think mm-hmm. the parents, man, have, have, have pushed some of these kids to, a, to you know, almost to a level where uh, it's not fun anymore. But they're trying. And, and, but you guys just said there's more to it than going professional. There's a lot of things that they can do in this space. But I think yeah. you have a lot of parents that have tunnel vision and said, I, my kids going to Stanford. My kids going to Wake Forest, and uh, and they don't have the skills to go to Stanford or Wake Forest. Both of you guys went to small schools, and you're you know you're living your dream and you're playing professionally. So I think a lot of times parents need to hear that from guys like yourself that you know you can go to you know it's guys who play D three golf that are that are pretty damn good. We got a kid up the road at UNC Greensboro um, that's Nick Lowry that's pretty damn good. And, uh, you know, we talk about, a you know, a mid-major college. So, anyway, I'm, I'm done. So, to okay. add on to that, a, a lot of people also don't know that Roy McIlroy was going to go to Middle Tennessee State yeah. college. Like, he's what, the number one golfer in the world now? Right. He's the so, number one now. I mean, Graham McDowell went to UAB. I, I mean, there's tons of places you can go uh, to, to play golf. And, I mean, the kids that want to – Make that make golf the career. They they'll let the parents know, and then the parents just start stepping in to help mold them into what the what the kid wants to do and how far they want to take it. 
But exactly. for the that's start, just just let the kids out there. That's, that's great advice. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, for the both of you, I met y'all down in Port St. Lucie, you know, volunteering, had a great time, love watching y'all do y'all thing, watching y'all at the driving range, you know, get y'all practicing and everything. Um, so question, APGA, could each one of you tell us what the APGA means to you and how has it helped you? Um, can we talk about that a little bit? I go, go first ahead, to Yeah, Matcha. Yeah, Matcha. Gonna have, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> for me, the the APGA means a lot to me because uh, when I first uh, turned pro, I was playing on Adams Tour, which is now the APT, and what money I did have only allowed me to play six tournaments, and then I started getting frustrated and all that kind of stuff and stopped playing. But what the APT or sorry, what the APGA provides. For me, is other guys who look like me, who have the same drive, same passion, are either have gone through or are going through some of the similar things that I am currently going through. And it allows me to be able to talk to them about what's going on. And they're able to provide their experiences and how they got through it or what, what it helped them get through it. And I mean, I don't think it's for me so much about the play. Yes, the play is important, but it's the the brotherhood uh, that the tour provides. Um, and it, like I I called Montreal yesterday morning, not in the greatest of spirits, but because I met him and we've been traveling together on APGA, I have the comfort in calling him when stuff is not going right, and we can have that hard conversation. And he's going to tell me what it is like you. He's going to be truthful about it. Tell me I'm tripping. You're going to tell me, yeah, you you can feel that way. And those are things that I'll always cherish. Those are things that I've always loved about the locker rooms and the sports that I played in. So that's that's what the APJ means to me. Oh, oh. Brother, hey. Hey. Good night, baby. Good night, baby. Good night, Good night, Good night, Good night Good night, Good night, Good night, Good night, that's what it's Good night, about. sweetie. Good night, baby. Love you. Um, uh, for me, uh, the APGA is is my reason. Uh, if it wasn't for the APGA, I wouldn't still be playing professional golf. Uh, I mean, they they've they've given me they've given me hope. They've given me a place to play. They've given me opportunity to to do something. Um, that I probably wouldn't have been able to do. The organization itself, uh, what it stands for, is just amazing. I support everything about it, uh, bringing more diversity to, to the game of golf. They, they want golf to look like America. Um, and that's their sole passion. And not, not only are they putting their words behind it, but they're putting their wallets behind it. Because those guys that run that organization, they've put up their own money for so long, I'm talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars that they've put out of their own pockets to make this tour run. And now we've had, we have, you know, corporate sponsors that are footing the bill. And, and that's why we were able to give out over a million dollars this year um, mm -hmm. in prize money and bonus money because of, you know, those guys having a dream and a passion and a mission that they've stuck to and are still sticking to to this day. Um, so for me, you know, I try not to get emotional when I talk about it. That's why I'm trying to go ahead and get it out, of, go ahead and get it out the way. But the, the 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 APGA will always have a near and dear place in my heart, just because um, they've given me uh, a second chance at competing and, and proving to the world that I do belong on the on the PGA tour and I do have what it takes. Even though you know I didn't pick this game up and, and play until college, and, and I've always been told I couldn't do it. And I've never had any sponsors still to this day. I don't have any, um, but I'm defying all of the odds and doing everything I can to play in tournaments. And the tournaments that I make sure that I can play in is the APGA Tour because I believe in everything. I, I, I want to be able there to support it. I mean, I'm, I've done I've done bake sales. I've done car washes. I mean, I've done yeah. raffles. I mean, if you look at my Facebook page, you can go back, you know, a couple of years back when, you know, I was doing GoFundMe's. I was doing whatever I could just to play in golf tournaments. The majority of those tournaments were APGA tour events because they're affordable, 
they give you phenomenal competition. Some of the best players on the world in the world play on that tour. And like Mike said, you were playing with guys that look like you with the same passion, with the same dreams and the same mm. challenges. So y'all got so much in common. Y'all can lean on each other. Yeah, when That's we tee it up, we when we tee it up, we know who we going for each other throat. But after yeah. that last putt go in on 18, you know, it's all love. What we eating at? You know what I'm saying? You know, how was your day? You know, everything good at home. It's a brotherhood, man. And that's exactly what the APGA Tour stands for. That's what they're continuing to try to build. And I stand behind that, man. I'm on the board. I do social media for them. Um, you know, I'm like a player liaison. Like, I, I make sure that I do whatever I can to make just make sure this tour continues to be successful because I love everything about it. Nice. Love it, love it. That's huge. That's huge. Segue okay. to that, Montreal. Well, real quick, Manny. So, um, help. like, so y'all are out there, y'all are grinding, travel, you know, these expenses and stuff. What help? What assistance? What what would help benefit? You know, you guys that are out there on the APJ tour and out, you know, competing in different tournaments and stuff, what would be beneficial to help you guys even right now? Go ahead, Mike. Mm. I mean, the the whole answer is everything, really. I mean, financial help is the biggest part of it because like Montreal, uh, some of us are working. At one point, I was working a full-time job um, and I moved my family back to San Antonio to take care of some of that financial burden. Uh, but I, by moving back, I also uh, started getting help from uh, uh, some of my friends. Uh, my friend Demonte, he's a co-founder of Blackbird, and uh, they started paying entry fees. And just paying entry fees, something like that, well, that's $400 less that I have to worry about when I'm trying to play in a tournament. So any any little thing helps because every time we go out to play in a tournament, we're spending at least $1,200. And for some of the guys, it's out of their own pocket. Um, but beyond finances, it's – I think a lot of it is just support and, and – not beating up the guys that may not be playing well uh, and just really just keep helping them push through and to achieve their dreams. Uh, I, I think those two things for me are the, are the, the big ones. Nice. Nice. Um, um, financial. I mean, like Mike said, it's all money. Uh, at the end of the day, it's all money. That's what keeps us, a lot of us, from making it on tour, from playing in tournaments. Uh, I interviewed Willie Mack last night, who just got his uh, Corn Ferry Tour card, and, and he's been after it. He, he went to Q School eight times. And, uh, I mean, the biggest thing Willie said last night, or one of the biggest things, because he, he said a lot of big things, but the one of the big things he said last night was, the worst feeling in the world is knowing that you're playing well and you don't have money to get to a tournament. Mm -hmm. So when you when you play professional golf, it's about waves. So you want to ride that wave when you're playing well. When you're playing bad, you kind of want to just get through it. You keep playing your way through it. But when you're playing well, you want to ride that wave. You want to play as much as you can. And our challenge is because of finances, there's times when we're playing well, and there, we, there's no tournaments for us to play because we can't afford it. Mm -hmm. So... But what to your to your question, Trisha? What can help us is anything. I've had guys say, you know, hey, I'm gonna take care of your hotel for this tournament. That's huge. I mean, you talking about hotel being one of your biggest expenses because if unless you want to stay in a Roach Motel where you're gonna pay thirty dollars a night and not sleep because you scared something crawling, you got on all your clothes. Big Mike know about that. Me and Big not, Big Mike know about that. <laughs> then you gonna you gonna spend you know eighty to a hundred dollars a night just to stay where, somewhere where you're comfortable. And, and, and for somebody to cover your meals for, you know, hey, this is for your food for the tournament. You know, that's, that's one other thing that you don't have to worry about. Somebody that takes say, hey, mm -hmm. I got airfare points. Let me get your flight. You know, 
it's it's it doesn't have to be one person saying, "Hey, I'm gonna give you a hundred thousand." You know, of course, that's ideal. That would be great. But it's a, a collective of people saying, "Hey, man, I got your room. Hey, man, I got your food. Hey, man, I got your flight. Hey, man, I got your rental car." You know, okay. That that that's what we're that's what we need. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Nice to put that out there, and um, because it's got to keep going. I've seen so many. I'm from LA, and I remember when. Ken Bentley first started the APGA and play at Westchester. I think it was like three tournaments or two tournaments, maybe. Three. That was it. You're right. Three I think about 11, 10, 11 years, 12 years ago. And um, he had a small dream. That's huge. Him and uh, I know he had other partners too. And look how big it is now, man. What, yeah, 12 man. years later? It's huge. Thir- it's no 13, years. 13 years. 13 years. Because I think, 13 years, I think the, the, the prize money on the first or second year was like $5,000 for the whole tour, something crazy. The first, like that. The, yeah, man, it's crazy. And it I remember crazy. I was, I, 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 it was I'm crazy. In LA. And um, now it's a million dollars. A million from five thousand dollars to a million dollars in ten, I mean thirteen years. It's really phenomenal though. I mean, Mm. I don't think they get enough credit for how you grow something out of love to a million dollar a year venture giving. And it's not like they want to pocket money. They right, because it's a nonprofit. It's a exactly. Non-profit they've organization. grown that to give, not to yeah. not to receive. They've grown right. from five thousand to a million to give to let you guys and future people like you to play on a tour. So I just don't think they get enough props from where it started and to where it is now, and not for their own gain for the gain for the growth of the game for minorities is huge and and whoever i like it too because you'll get whoever on the apga tour i have so many people done passed through there from tony fee now to there's a gang of people that done passed through there that probably just got a little kick enough to get to that next level and then you get another yeah. kick to move to the next level so you know it's just phenomenal what they're doing now right, let's wrap it up sif give me uh give me something hey man it was great to uh sit down and uh, speak with the both of you guys man i take my hat off to you you're living your dream man that's the you know one of the most a lot of people they'll never live their dream they'll never live it out i mean just due to whatever circumstances it seems as though that you guys have a solid foundation uh with your spouses and kids and um you know i can tell that uh, you got you all got it together man and that's unbelievably great um my last question for everyone else to see your last official tournament. What was your Saturday Sunday scores? Um, for, uh, I'll go first because he won, so we can let him talk. Later. <laughs> we don't even um, want to know this. Yeah, yeah, we, we, he 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 won, so we'll let him talk last. Um, it, it was <laughs> so our tournaments now are in the middle of the week, so it was a Wednesday Thursday event. Okay. Um, nice. Practice. Uh, the first day was Wednesday. Uh, I shot 73, um, which was disappointing to me because I bogeyed my last three holes to shoot mm. 73. And then uh, the second day, I shot 69, uh, which was also impressive for me because I played the last four holes three under. So I kind of got my got my get back on the golf course yeah. from the day yeah, before. I don't play. I don't play testing. Yeah. It's not a joke. Testing. The yeah. Testing ranching. I don't played it a few times. Testing ain't no joke. Yeah, so seventy three sixty nine for me to uh, finish eight, tie for eight. Good score. Good score. Nice, nice. Uh, I shot sixty eight the first day, um, and like Montreal, uh, I bogeyed the last two holes coming in. <laughs> uh, so that wasn't fun. But um, I shot sixty nine the second day. Great score. Hey, let me ask look, before before Manny goes on. So. When you guys came in, it sounds like that you were licking a little oil. Did, did you feel any nervousness or did you just, you know, just hit bad shots? Um, on the first day of 17, I actually hit my tee shot exactly where I wanted it. I just uh-huh. thought the wind was going to push it to the right and never did. Right. And um, it went into the bunker and I thought the bunkers were fluffy and they weren't. Mm. So <laughs> I, I hit one like 20 feet and almost made par, but – didn't go in. Um, 18. What am I doing? 18. Oh, hit okay, hit okay. T shot. Second shot I hit where I thought I needed to because that pin was kind of crazy. It's tucked way in the back on top of a 
I don't know, a seven by five shelf. <laughs> and I landed, landed at the top of the ridge and spun it back to the front edge. So uh ended up three putting it. Um, but I mean, overall I can't complain. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you got the win. Shit. You got the win. Uh, for, for me, it was just uh, uh, it was it was a mental distraction, uh, and I realized that the second day, um, I was two under, you know, two under through fifteen holes. Uh, so I had been golfing my ball. It wasn't a great day, but I was managing it, and somehow I just just turned off. I turned off my mental strength and I just started making mistakes. Like I, I made my first bogey from 107 yards out, out of, out of the right side of the right rough. But it was, I mean, it was a, a wedge in my hand and I made bogey from there. Then I made another bogey on 17. Then I three putted 18 as well. Um, it was just mentally. I, I just wasn't there. The second day I made sure I corrected that mistake, but that's mm-hmm. what it was for me. Just, I just mentally checked out. And the thing is, I, and that's why I asked the question because a lot of people will view this is because people have no idea the smallest distraction man the small mm. i mean you could it, it could be an airplane going across i mean going through the air and you just look up at the airplane and you don't know that your mind's thinking still thinking about that damn airplane and you pull the trigger on a shot and then you said damn it i had still had that plane going across my mind so the small the small things man can be paramount and i just wanted yeah. people to hear that absolutely mm. absolutely Good Absolutely. stuff. Good question. Uh, Trisha. All right. Two quick things. First, Montrell, Rico Evans. I spoke with him today, and he was he went to school with you at Benedict. And um, I don't know if you remember him or whichever, um, but he remembers you, and he just wanted to say he, like, gives you big ups for, like, keep on, you know, for still pushing from college and still doing your thing. So we spoke early, and he spoke to that. And then... Secondly, for the both of you, we can take turns. Um, what would be a little word of wisdom that you would give to your younger self? Keep going. Uh, never let anyone tell you what you can't do. Um, and, and and always keep your faith in God because no matter what, the, the verse is so true. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And and I, I I make sure that I model myself after that because there are some times in life where you get in these dark places and you just want to, I mean, it's so easy to just give up. You know what? I'm done. You know, I'm going to do something else. I, I'm, I'm done. And you just have to continue. You have to have something to fall back on that keeps you driven, that keeps you focused, to make you get right back on track like you do when you run off the road. You get a little sleepy. They got those little bars that, 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 that wake you up. And, <laughs> yeah, and that's, exactly. that's, a, that's, a, that's the same exact thing you need in life. So I would tell my long, my younger self, man, don't let anybody tell you what you can't do. Because if you work hard, you deserve whatever you get. And and keep God first and keep the faith. Love it. Uh, my, mine would be patience. Um, where you think you should be may not necessarily be where God has you. And you also don't know where you're going to end up going. So having that patience will allow the things that you have come to you to, to take fruition. So uh, yeah, definitely patience is, is one that I'm working on now, even as I'm older. So Love Nice, it. nice. Love okay. It. Love it. Bonus question time. All right, you guys, before we get out of here, bonus question. You both got. Ten million dollars. You ain't you can't hide it from your wife. She knows about the ten million dollars. <laughs> How much exactly? Exactly. You and the whole family know you got ten tickets in the bank. How much are you spending on your game immediately? How much how much are you gonna how much of that ten million dollars are you gonna direct to your game? I got it, Trill. We just gonna hand it to our wife and let her tell us what we're gonna spend on. <laughs> <laughs> Great answer because that would have been my answer too. <laughs> and on that note, we all got to. You always got to leave with something. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you had to know you had the ten million. You can't put that in the secret account. And on that note, oh, air horns and clapping. And again, you guys, dude, thank you, you guys, the family. Anytime you need to come on, 
I, oh, I caught that uh, episode, Montreal, with you and uh, Willie Mac, the third beautiful stuff. You know, we're reaching out. Content is king, man. And we got to be the narrators of our own story, not his story, but our story. And uh, on that note, we are out. Thank y'all for coming on. Thank you guys so much. Anytime. Uh, thanks for having us, man. Our pleasure. No, it's a blessing. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. I think it's my show. I can do all kind of stuff. Okay. We forgot to give our props to Gus Vital. Both his sons signed to Temple University full ride scholarships. We never want to let that slide on this show. Mm -hmm. How great yeah, it absolutely. is to play golf and get yeah, to that yeah. get to that university. Our bad yeah, for not yeah, mentioning yeah. it in the beginning of the show, but we're going to shout it out this time, and we're going to shout it out on probably the next show because between uh, the Wards and the Vitals yeah. and many others, they are putting in that work, and you guys, both of you guys, are leading examples too. Now, guess what? We out! <laughs> <laughs>